Okay. I'm going to turn it on here, right? We're going to talk tonight about a subject, uh, kind of a controversial subject among some people. I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here, uh, preaching a sermon tonight and also answering an email that I got. Um, those of you who don't know, if, if you aren't aware, I'm, I'm in an internet ministry, so I get all kinds of people from around the world and had a brother in Sweden say, I have a talent for drawing weirdos, so <laughs> we'll see it in this email. You can turn your Bible right to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. At some point in time in your life as a Christian, you're probably going to run into somebody who is a Pentecostal charismatic. And um, one of their primary doctrines that they will focus on is the thing of speaking in tongues. Why? Well, because that's the easiest one to fake. If they say that they can heal, you know, well, take them to the hospital and say, heal that person right there. Yeah. They can't. You know? If they say, I can prophesy, say, okay, tell me what's going to happen next week. They can't. You know? Their prophesying is just, you know, you'll be making a lot of money soon or something. I mean, I, I'm going to be a little bit sarcastic with them because I deal with them and they're something else. But I made a video exposing this thing of speaking in tongues and showing that actually people in the occult, when they have devils come into them, can actually speak in unknown tongues. That's why you have to be very careful about just letting yourself go and just wanting the spirit to come into you and speak through your mouth. That's very dangerous. Very dangerous. I'll read the part of the email here. She says, Dear Brian, I am a 54-year-old Christian woman in Indiana. I came across your video on YouTube about the danger of tongues. I agree with you that some people take it or others may be possessed by devils. I believe there is a third alternative and that it can be a genuine gift from God. I believe that God has given me that gift. More than 25 years ago, I was attending a United Methodist church. My faith in Jesus and the Bible was very weak. Then I heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues on Christian TV. Late one night, I was watching a Christian TV program, and a man invited anyone who wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to repeat a prayer. I did, and suddenly I was able to speak out fluently in a language that I do not know. Sounds a lot like French. I went from being a doubter to fully believing in Jesus and the Bible. If it was from the devil, it sure backfired. I've been able to pray in tongues at will since that day. It resides within me. I speak in two different languages now. I'm not faking it. They sound like real languages to me, and other people have told me the same thing. It is not ecstatic at all for me. I don't have to work myself up at all to do it, and it doesn't give me any type of a rush. I often pray in tongues when I am driving my car. I in no way believe that a Christian must speak in tongues in order to be saved. I believe that you are a sincere follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and that we are brother and sister in the Lord. I don't know about that, but what we're going to talk about is, was there a gift of speaking in tongues in the Bible? Yeah, that's legitimate, okay? But I want to focus in on something in particular here and kind of debunk the modern speaking in tongues, the thing of praying in tongues. Is there any support in that for, is there any support for that, excuse me, in Scripture? And uh, she, I asked her that, and she quoted this verse in another email, which I'm not going to read. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. We'll start there. Okay, it says here, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Okay, I want you to notice a couple of things here. First of all, there in verse uh, 14, notice Paul does not say, for when I pray in an unknown tongue. He says, if. Okay, that's very important there. He's not saying you should. He's saying if I do pray in an unknown tongue, it's unfruitful. He's actually rebuking the thing of them saying that they're praying in tongues. Doesn't make any sense. Look at verse 15. What is it then if I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also? This lady said that she prays in a, in a voice and she doesn't know what it means. A tongue that doesn't 
She, I have no idea what I'm saying. That's not how you're supposed to pray. Amen. You're supposed to understand what you're praying for. We're going to look at some scriptures to prove that, to back that up. Uh, turn over to James, the book of James, chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 2 is where we're going to start out. And again, most of the charismatics, they will stick in 1 Corinthians 14, well, 12 through 14. That's one of their favorite places. And we'll go back to Acts chapter 2. They don't do much comparing scripture with scripture. You need to watch out for that. People taking verses completely out of their context and not comparing Scripture with Scripture. But here in James chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. How do you know if you're praying in an unknown tongue? How do you know that you're not disobeying that verse? Yeah, amen. Say, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, then how do you know you're saying the right thing? Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Turn back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Here we're going to see the Lord Jesus' instructions on uh, praying. All right, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Okay, uh... I didn't see Jesus saying anything there about not understanding what you're praying. You're to understand what you're praying for. That's very important. Okay? And that's interesting too there because he says that people that use vain repetitions, he calls them heathen. You know, watch out for vain repetitious prayers that people pray and it really doesn't mean anything. You know, you should talk to God as he is your father if you're saved. Amen. You know, that's very important. Turn next to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Okay, it says here, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Again, how can you pray if you don't understand what you're saying? How can you thank the Lord? And, and you know, if, if you just rattle off a bunch of gibberish, you know, how are you going to have peace from that? You know? And I'll tell you something, there are times in your life as a Christian that you're going to have some real trials that you're going through, and you're going to pray and pray and pray, and the Lord will give you peace if you talk to Him for a while, because you got the thing talked out. You know, it's like that with family members. You know, husband and wife have an argument, and what do you do? You talk it out. You know, would it make sense for one of the people to, to sit there and go, blah, 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 you know, what makes sense? You know? Why we, we talked it out in an unknown tongue. You say that's crazy. You know, we wouldn't do that. Why would you do it with God? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But I've heard this argument. They'll say, but yes, but the Holy Spirit can speak through you. You know, they'll, they'll say he can make groanings, you know, and things, but you can't. We're going to look at that verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I'll tell you what. When you deal with these people, and I've dealt with them for years now, you, you have to go to the scriptures because these people will twist the scriptures just unbelievable contortions of the Bible that, they, that they'll make. 
And you know, you actually read the verse, and it's it says something totally opposite of what they're trying to get through. It's just incredible. Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-six. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there are times when you have something that's bothering you so much you don't even know the right words for it. What the Holy Spirit does, he'll know. He knows the right things to say. But if they try to use this one here and say, see the Holy Spirit speaking through you and he intercedes and that's what's going on. No, it says groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay? So, again, it's not an unknown tongue that the Holy Spirit somehow speaks through you. But um, she claims here her impartation of the gift of speaking in tongues. <coughs> Late one night, I was watching a Christian TV program, and a man invited anyone who wanted to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit to repeat a prayer. Now, obviously, there were no TVs in the book of Acts. So that's an issue there. But uh, secondly, did anybody ever pray to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Let's look what the Bible has to say about that. Acts chapter 2. Here's the most famous passage of all the speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says here, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there, appeared, uh, excuse me, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men, or devout Jews, no, I'm sorry, Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Were there any unknown tongues present here? No. no. And if you read the next couple of verses there, verses 7 through 11, the tongues, the languages are listed. There are no unknown tongues in Acts chapter 2. And yet the charismatics, they'll try to take you over here and say these are unknown tongues. They'll say they spoke in unknown tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It doesn't say that. The word unknown tongues does not appear in this chapter. Amen. They'll lie to you. Again, if you don't have your Bible with you, if you don't know your Bible, they'll deceive you. And a lot of a lot of new, you know, baby Christians will go into this charismatic call and they'll get deceived because they don't have a Bible. Okay. Uh, turn next to. And by the way, did anybody pray for the gift there? No. No. Came upon them. Turn to the next instance of speaking in tongues in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10. Speaking in tongues in the book of Acts actually only appears three times. Acts chapter 10, we're going to start up at verse 34, if you get into context. Okay, it says here, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Okay? So he's preaching there, and, he's, and there's the gospel is starting to go to the Gentiles now, not just solely to the Jews. But jump down to uh, verse 44. It says here, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that which heard the word, and they of the circumcision were, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Again, did anybody pray a prayer to receive the gift? No, Peter didn't say, okay, now, you know, every head bowed, every eye closed, we're going to pray this prayer, and you're going to get the gift of tongues, baptism of the Holy Ghost. No. Interesting, too, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues before they were baptized, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. But something else that's also <laughs> interesting in the book of Acts, every time the tongues are spoken, the real gift of tongues, Jews are present. Right. 
Why? Well, because the Jews required a sign. That was the purpose of those early sign gifts that were given there. When Israel as a nation rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, their promised Messiah, then the sign gifts went away. Okay? And they say, well, you know, I had a guy say, well, I don't believe that. I, I believe I have the gift of healing. I said, meet me at the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know, that's tempting the Lord and stuff. Uh -huh. no, it isn't. <laughs> now we'll go to the, the last one in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 19. See here another time when they speak in tongues. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. We just stop there for a minute. You cross-reference that and go back. That was John the Baptist's baptism. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was preaching in Judea and in Jerusalem. <coughs> they came out. These were Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse four. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. Did they pray a prayer? No. So again, you know, this, this thing, oh, I prayed a prayer. I was watching late night TV. I prayed a prayer, and I got the gift. There's no scripture for that. Okay? Don't fall for that thing. Okay? So what is Paul trying to say then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? What's really going on there? Turn back to 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to see what he's trying to say here. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. It says here, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Okay, did Paul speak in tongues? Yes. Look at verse 19. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In other words, if you're going to get mad and act like a little brat, you know, okay, go ahead. But understand this and act like a man, is what Paul's saying. Okay? That's the way it is. There's no point in standing up and speaking in tongues if people can't understand you. Amen. Okay? A child can stand up and testify for Jesus Christ, and you get more out of it than some charismatic standing up there and preaching an hour-long service in a tongue you can't understand. Okay, it's ridiculous. And there is there is absolutely no scripture at all to back up this thing of praying in unknown tongues. You know, there's no point in that. I mean, how do you know what you're saying to the Lord? You know, when you pray to the Lord, you're asking him for your first of all, you're offering thanksgiving to him, and you're praying about things in your life that are important, the problems that you're having and whatever. It should be a very close personal relationship between you and your heavenly father. Why would you Try to mess that up. See? And, and, you know, there again, I mean, that's a whole other thing I could get into, but I won't get into that right now. But one other thing I want to cover here in this 1 Corinthians 14, um, just want to kick this as I'm here. Verse 26, jump down there. Because this is another thing that's very prevalent among charismatics, the whole modern house church movement. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation, that all things be done unto edifying? Now, another thing that is very prevalent is they'll say that everybody should be doing things. So, you know, guys over here, you can stand up and sing, and you guys back there, you can stand up and pray. Over here, you can prophesy and read the Bible over here. 
I mean, they teach that. Again, I've run into people that say that. And what do you have? Confusion. Okay. Paul, again, he's rebuking that. He's saying you're not supposed to all be standing up and doing everything. It's all to be done decently and in order. You know, this whole chapter here, he is rebuking them. He's not saying this is Bible doctrine, this is what you're supposed to do. You know, it, it just, when you have a church that goes to the books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians and they get their major doctrine out of that and ignore everything else, that's a problem. Yeah, because the church at Corinth was the most carnal of all the churches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't want to you be careful of that. But you say, where does this woman go? She go to some kind of Pentecostal church? She says here, I am now a member of a separate Baptist church. Do you think this stuff is going to come to the Baptist churches? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. The charismatic movement, I, I don't have the exact quote with, with me right now, but back in the early 1900s when it was really getting underway, they were saying a lot of the, the, the bigger... Men back then, the theologians and things were saying, if we don't stop this, it's going to destroy all the churches. And guess what? It's destroying all the churches. They were the ones that brought the rock music into the church. They were the ones that really are pushing the new versions. You know, no more dress standards. I mean, just everything is falling apart. And you look, you trace it back, it goes back to the charismatics, back to that charismatic movement. Be very careful. And like I said, you will run into these people before long. You'll run into them. Watch out. Um, but is there a danger in it? James chapter 3 is where we'll end tonight. James chapter 3. Is there a danger in, in saying, well, you know, maybe it's okay to speak in tongues. Maybe it's all right. I want to show you that there's a very serious danger in that. Okay, James chapter 3, starting at verse 3. It says here, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that, um, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great and are driven by uh, fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set upon fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unholy evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God and even the Father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Perfect description of the modern charismatic movement. You need to get control of your tongue mm -hmm. as a Christian. And by the way, if you uh, look up there, in verse 2, here in James chapter 3, it says, For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. You know where sin really starts? Right here. It's connected to the brain, you know. And the Bible says, too, you know, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know. If you can get control of this mouth here, you'll be able to control the rest of your body. Amen. Now, why would you say, I'm going to let a spirit come in and just use this however it wants? Yeah. Mm. That's dangerous. It's yes. very dangerous. Avoid this whole charismatic movement like the play. I can tell you that. And, you know, I'll just say this in closing, an interesting thought. You have somebody say, well, I think that speaking in tongues is for today. Okay, well, here's an experiment that you can do then. 
get in an airplane and fly over to Jerusalem and get out and see if it works. Okay? <laughs> the book of Acts, they were speaking to Jews. Yeah. Okay? Go over and see if the Lord starts speaking through you, the Holy Spirit starts speaking through you in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You know? If that's if you want to believe in the legitimate gift of speaking in tongues, that's what would have to happen. Yeah. Okay? It's a sign gift given for the conversion of the Jews. Mm -hmm. It's not some kind of a thing that you can do here in America and, you know, do all the things that they do. <laughs> So, like I said, watch out for that, this fake movement, okay? Don't be deceived by it, you know, this gift of speaking in the unknown tongues thing, it's, there's no scriptural basis for it. So that's going to be it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your word. I usually like to close a sermon that way, Lord, because without your word, we would be just in blindness. We wouldn't know what's right and what's wrong. But, uh, Lord, your word is so clear and so plain, and your Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. And, uh, Lord, there's, there's a lot of evil people out there that, that want to destroy Bible-believing churches. And uh, they're dwindling, Lord. There's, there's less and less out there. And, I, and so, Lord, I just pray that, that uh, everyone here would stay in your word and, uh, so that they would not be deceived. And I just uh, pray, Lord, that we would all focus on eternal things this week. And um, seek to do something for you with our lives. And I pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Brian, see if anybody has any questions. Anybody have any questions?